Hello everybody, this is Chris Schmidt from Rocket Lasso and I've got a little mini tutorial for you. A technique that I bumped into while working on a practice run for an upcoming utility splines plugin video. But this one is not going to be using the utility splines. We're just going to be using the push apart effector. So starting out, we've got a bunch of different spheres. Eh, let's put them into a cloner, drop them all directly inside of it. Set the cloner to, let's do linear and no movement, and I'll just make 12 to start out with. So there are 12 spheres stacked on top of each other with the cloner selected, creating a random effector. They'll each move a little bit. I would like these to move on X about a thousand, on Z, actually on Y about a thousand, but on Z, I'll say zero. So they're all kind of flat on top of each other. And this one will be random dot position. Selecting the cloner, I would like a separate random and this one will not affect the position it will affect the scale so selecting scale i would like it to be uniform absolute and i'll start shrinking these way down not quite to negative one but now we've got large ones and we've got small ones and rename this one random dot scale going back to position i would like to get some animation going here currently under effector it sets a random so each one's completely unique and random but static changing that mode to noise, they will be noise based, but currently they're all identical because they start in the same spot. So I would like them each to kind of sample a different random noise. So if you say index, it's as if each one has their own unique noise. Hitting play, we'll see it begin to animate and they're zipping all over the place. Uh, slowing that down, let's do animation speed of, let's do 25%. There we go, a little bit calmer. Now you're seeing that these spheres are all kind of flat on the Z plane, but they're passing right through each other. Now let's talk about the push apart effector. I have talked about the push apart effector and that I'm not a big fan of it because it doesn't work very well with animation, but this technique does a pretty good job of getting around that limitation. You'll see that creating the push apart effector, it's now saying, well, if you're within the radius of each other and because they're default spheres, this should perfectly match. If you're within 100 of each other, kind of push out to a different position, but because they're animated, you see how they get these really bad pops, everything snapping around and that can be frustrating. And that's why I almost never use this thing. But there is a way around this, and that is if we select the cloner, I would like to calm down this animation after it's already happened. And we can do that with a delay effector. So I'll just drag these in the order. That's just to stay organized. The delay effector by default is set to blend, and that's what we want. And already at 50%, you can see that these are calming down a little bit. They're snapping into these positions, but there's a little bit of a transition between them. And we can push this really far, like 90%. And now you can see that they're not snapping through each other anymore, but they are now passing through each other again. So here's where things get interesting. What if we repeat that process? I'm gonna say, let's make a second push apart and a second delay, and we need to apply those. So manually dragging in the push apart and manually dragging in the delay. We are now saying, okay, after you've moved and after you've calmed down, push apart again and then calm down again. So right now, if I play, it's probably not gonna look terribly different, Let's go to the delay and I found between 50 and 60 is a good number. So let's go to split the difference at 55. And now you can see that they're popping, but not as much. And we've got the push apart. These don't need to work as hard. Currently there's 10 iterations being like, okay, move out of the way. Oh, did I collide with something else? Well, move it out of the way. Let's drop that down to one. So there's only one iteration. And now the trick is let's keep repeating this again and again and again. So selecting all four of those, I'll duplicate that to eight. Let's double that again to 16. Let's double that again all the way up to 32 different copies of the exact same setup. Selecting the cloner, it's really easy to apply all of these. I shall lock the cloner, delete out all the push parts and all the delays, and then select all of them. And as they're dragged in, they will be applied in the same order as they look in the object manager. And now with any luck, given the settings we just fed in, you'll see that these are not colliding with each other anymore. And because they're pushing away and then slowing down and then pushing away and then calming down, we have play here. Now we can see that they are avoiding each other really well, but they're not popping. They're not snapping into that new position. Now you could keep on making more copies here. The more you duplicate this, I think the smoother the effect is going to look overall. We still get this nice random movement traveling here, but we don't get those harsh collisions that we would with some sort of collision tag if we were actually using the rigid body but we get all that nice smooth movement. So yeah, copying those messages we want. If you want to tweak the settings, it's really easy. You can search for, let's search for say the delay and we could select all of those. If you want, you can click this pop out button here and get these as a separate menu. Search for push and select all those and also pop it out. 
So now we've got each of them separately, so we can roll all of them, clear the search, and now we can say, hey, let's do extra iterations of the push apart. So let's jump it up to 11. And I don't think it's going to look too different. We can see they're pushing away and you can see that all those extra iterations were not needed. Let's give it some extra space here. Let's say that they shouldn't be just barely bumping into each other. Let's give them a little bit of breathing room. And now we should see a little bit of a gap between each one of them. And of course we can change the blend mode. If we crank it up too much, you see it's going to slow down so much. It could take forever to ease into the animation, but it will be doing a bit of avoiding. But like I said, between 50 and 60 seems to give the best number where they're avoiding. We got the same overall motion, but they don't collide with each other. Jumping back into the cloner, go into the object tab. Let's make more copies. Let's jump it up to 24 and you'll see it's still doing an excellent job of avoiding each other. We can double that again up to 48. Now, at a certain point, if you're going to over, if they start getting overcrowded, they're going to have to force each other out of the way and you'll see them start to fight a little bit more. But as long as we give them enough breathing room and we avoid enough, you're going to see you get a really nice effect. And we can clean up the overall scene file really easily by selecting all these, hitting Alt-G, rename that Effector, and there we go. Nice and clean scene file, ready to modify and change however we like. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another live stream or tutorial really soon in the future. Bye-bye, everybody.